20 is a great chapter. 20 we can spend some time on. Chapter 20 is the unreality of phenomenal distinctions. The unreality of phenomenal distinctions. This is very important for spiritual practice, whether you're Buddhist or Christian or no religion or anything. Sabuti, what do you think? Can the Buddha be perceived by his perfectly formed body? Can the Buddha be understood by his perfectly formed body? No, world honored one. The Tathagata cannot be perceived by his perfectly formed body. Because the Tathagata teaches that a perfectly formed body is not really such. It is merely called a perfectly formed body. Sabuti, what do you think? Can the Tathagata be perceived by means of any phenomenal characteristic? No, world honored one. The Tathagata may not be perceived by any phenomenal characteristic because the Tathagata teaches that phenomenal characteristics are not really such. They are merely called phenomenal characteristics. So this is a very important teaching. It's a very important teaching. You know, you go to mountains in Korea and people will say, oh, look at that rock. That's, a, that's Buddha rock. That's Kwansei and Bosa rock. Oh, why? Because look, look, it looks like it's, that's Buddha's face. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you look at this rock at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, when the sun hits it, that's Buddha's face. That's Buddha rock. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so that's Buddha. So many people pray, 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 pray to this rock. Many people pray to this rock. Some temples have this. So I once lived in a temple and people said, wow, this temple is very special, more special than other temples. I said, oh yeah? They said, yeah, this temple is more special than other temples. Why? They said, you see that rock? And I said, yeah. And they said, if you look at the rock, that's Buddha praying. Really? Yeah, Buddha praying. And I said, oh, Buddha praying? How? They said, look, if you see, there's the, there's the nose, there's the nose, there's the lips, there's the chin, there's the, the hands, the hapjang. Buddha praying. And I said, what is Buddha praying for? If Buddha is Buddha, that means Buddha means all become one, your day. What does Buddha pray for? That's like God praying. Well, God is already God. Why pray? So, very interesting. People think that something is Buddha. Therefore, if you say something is Buddha, this rock is Buddha, that means that's not. That's making two. That's making two. That's why in this world you have Holy Land, maybe in Israel or something. That means something else is not the Holy Land. That's making two. But true Buddhist teaching is yarde. Yarde. Bul'i, not two. This experience is not two. It's complete. It's perfectly complete. This moment. Experiencing this moment is complete. Experiencing that? That's Buddha. 
or God, whatever you like. But that's already a mistake. So this is very interesting. Also, not only this Buddha in the mountains, other religions have this. You know, I often tell this story. In, uh, in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, a few years, uh, two years ago maybe, still, this hospital, very famous hospital outside Boston, people saw up in the window on the third floor of this hospital, this Song uh, Maria, Virgin Mary, in the window. Then many people came there and praying, praying, praying. Then in this window, it looks like Virgin Mary. They think that's a... So they come putting flowers and praying and crying and pushing people in wheelchairs, you know, to this situation and praying, 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 please. And day and night, people coming from South America, California, Canada, to see this window that the Virgin Mary appeared. Now, a, a few years, uh, last year, you heard about this, this grilled cheese sandwich with Jesus' face in it. Did you hear about this in Korea? I really believe the wrong people are controlling the media in Korea. It was very famous hakon in America last year. Some woman made a grilled cheese sandwich, a sandwich, and she fried it. And she, was, she took a bite of the sandwich and she looked Jesus' face in the sandwich. This was on internet. Don't believe me. Go to google.com, type in Jesus face sandwich. Maybe grilled cheese if you want. I don't know. Maybe it's a Jesus face sandwich. You can get answer. This woman sold this sandwich on ebay.com for maybe shimanbul. Because some people believe this sandwich had Jesus' true face in the sandwich. Human beings are crazy. Human beings are crazy. If you look at a cloud, that's a tiger. Then look at the cloud. Now it's a turtle. Now it's an elephant. Now it's a snake. Same. So people see something, and just the image from their mind makes that. So Catholic person, look at this window maybe, or Christian person, look at this window. Oh, Song Maria. Maybe a Buddhist person go there and say, not Song Maria, Kwan Sam Bosal. But don't make anything. So this is very interesting. Sabuti, what do you think? Can the true Buddha, look at this sentence, can the true Buddha be perceived by his perfectly formed Buddha body? A body that looks like a Buddha? Like that? No, world honored one, the Tathagata cannot be perceived by his perfectly formed body because the Buddha, Tathagata, thus come. Yorde, innen kudero, yorde irago hanen deshi, innen kudero irago hanen goya, innen kudero natananen goya. Yorde, yorde, yorde bull means innen kudero. Does that have some form? Some shape? Just like this has some characteristic? Has some figure? True Buddha, true God, true Holy Spirit, true anything doesn't have a particular form. That's the teaching of this. That's the teaching of this. So if you want to see true Buddha, throw away Buddha. 
throw away God, throw away everything. Then, when you see, just see. When you hear, just hear. When you smell, just smell. When you taste, just taste. When you feel, My, my, my Changsam, my Changsam understands Buddha better than some people in this room. My, under, my, my Changsam understands Fan Buddha. It doesn't make an idea. It doesn't say it's this or that. Just wind come, it feels wind. You can see. It's very simple. Our mind is just like that. But if you make some idea, some Buddha idea, some God idea, some this idea, some that idea, some Korea idea, America idea, conservative idea, progressive idea, female idea, pure idea, impure idea, that's already not your day. That's not true Buddha. Very simple. It's very simple. Okay? Now I saw on the internet there's a tree. Look on the internet. Don't believe me. Yahoo.com. There's a type in in the Google Jesus tree image. Now there's a tree. I don't know where it is. Maybe some of our Western folks are. There's a, it was just on Google. Uh, Yahoo.com yesterday. There's a tree that has the image of Jesus in the tree. The, the, the tree is, if you look at the bark on the tree, people say, oh my God, there's Jesus, he's in the tree. That's cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. So this is very subversive teaching right here about Buddhism, about Christianity, about anything. Don't make anything. If you want to see true Buddha, don't look for Buddha. In Zen we have a phrase. If you meet the Buddha, kill the Buddha. Some Buddha form, idea. That's not true Buddha. Doesn't look like this. The true Buddha doesn't look like this. That's why we have many, many Buddhas. Buddhism is a very interesting teaching technique. Many, many, many Buddhas means no Buddha. Many, many, many Buddhas. Many hundreds of Buddhas. Thousands of Buddhas. Some temples in Korea have Bengman Buljon. One million Buddhas hall. That means, million Buddhas means no Buddha. Yeah. Very interesting. So Buddhism uses this idea of Buddha to explode. If you're an intellectual, you say to deconstruct the idea of Buddha. So what's Buddha? If you think it looks like that, you're wrong. That's an image for children. The true Buddha is when you see, when you hear, when you smell, when you taste, when you touch, inen kudero, that's Buddha. That's Buddha. Yare, like this. Seeing, like this. Hearing, just like this. Smelling, just like this. That's Buddha. That's why we use this. This is, just a, this is just a teaching technique to deliver the experience to you. Because you're so used to what you hear, so used to what you see, so used to what you smell and taste, you forgot that that's Buddha. Anyway, that's not Buddha. But if you ask me to teach you about Buddha, Already the birds understood. <gasps> Very interesting. Okay? Anyone have any questions about that? Any questions? Good. So, that's kind of comparable to Gongjuk Jisek Sektuk Shigong. 
form is emptiness. Emptiness is Buddha. So if you think that form, if you think that form is Buddha, that form of Buddha is true Buddha, you're wrong. If you think this form of Jesus is Jesus, you're wrong. True Buddha, true Jesus, true God. Truth is just yore. Your experience as it is. This moment as it is, already complete. That's Buddha. Amazing teaching. Okay, next chapter, chapter 21. Words cannot express truth. That which words express is not truth. So, do you want to understand this chapter, chapter 21? This is pointing at something very interesting. Do you want to understand this chapter? This is how you understand chapter 21. Everyone ready? Get ready. You want to understand chapter 21? I'll give you secret key. Secret key. Nobody will give you this key to chapter 21. You'll be able to impress your friends with this explanation of chapter 21. Words cannot express truth. That which words express is not truth. Ready for the deep meaning of that? Watch. Understand chapter 21? Wonderful. <laughs> chapter 22. It cannot be said that anything is attainable. It cannot be said that anything is attainable. Just like chapter 21, it seems difficult. It cannot be said that anything is attainable. Then Sabuti asked the Buddha, world honored one, in the attainment of the consummation of incomparable enlightenment, did Buddha make no attainment at all? And Buddha replied, just so, Sabuti. Through the consummation of incomparable enlightenment, I acquired not even the least thing. I didn't get anything when I got enlightenment. I didn't get anything. That's why it's called highest enlightenment. I didn't attain anything. That's why it's called highest enlightenment. You don't cut it, you mold your soul. So one day, Sabuti, this Sabuti, in another sutra, in the Prajnaparamita long sutra, Sabuti sat down to give a talk. Sabuti sat down. This Sabuti, he was going to talk about truth. Yeah? He was going to talk about truth. So he sat down, he went... Everyone's waiting for him to give a talk. And he sits down and he goes, <clears throat> just about to give a talk. And then suddenly, suddenly this God, Chakra, this God Chakra comes down do, 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 and starts dropping flowers on the ground. Now, that's usually done when there's a great teaching. After a great teaching, you know, like uh, when two people get married, they come out and you throw stuff at them. It's like that. Usually at the end of a teaching, 
The, some god would come down and throw flowers, flower petals. Ding, 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 ding. So Sabuti's just sitting down. <clears throat> And then this god comes down and starts throwing flowers on him. And Sabuti says, hey, why are you doing that? I didn't open my mouth. I didn't, I didn't say one thing about truth. And the guy says, yeah, thank you for your teaching. And Sabuti says, but I didn't say anything. And the god Chakra says, yeah, you didn't say anything. I didn't hear anything. That's truth. That's true dharma. You didn't say anything. I didn't hear anything. Thank you for your teaching. And then took off. Amazing. Amazing. So that's the meaning of this. There's not something that you get. There's not something that you get. Already you have it in this moment. Yeah? It's very simple. So Sabuti didn't say anything. He just... <clears throat> That's the Dharma speech. Amazing. That's why this is so subversive. It's even subversive about this Dharma talk I'm giving now. Wasting time. The bird, the wind, the water, your growling stomach. That's already the Diamond Sutra. Sound of the fan smell of the incense. When you smell that, you don't get something, that experience. Through that experience of smelling the incense, through the experience of feeling this, you don't get something. That's all. Okay? Amazing. I, I'm surprised everyone isn't up dancing from joy. Hani simuro. This is the most subversive, liberating teaching ever expressed, I believe. In words, that is, which is already a mistake. Nobody dancing yet. Maybe later. So, it cannot be said that anything is attainable. You don't attain anything. It's already complete. So I often use this example. I've told this story many, many, many times. Uh, and it just happened to me recently. Actually, I'll tell a new version of it. Recently, I was very busy. I had to go out, do something. I had, to, I had four appointments I had to do, some business for the International Zen Center, something I had to do, some meetings. I had to do this. Then I uh, was, got my subway pass, my subway pass, my Jia Chol Kad, and I put it in my mouth. Because I had a bag and I had to pick this up and I had this and I had to do this. So I put it, put it in my mouth because I had to do something and get something. And I'm like, then I got some things and I'm like, then, where's my subway card? <laughs> then I'm looking for my subway card. Really busy. And someone calls up, Sanim, we're doing it. And I hang up. Then, where's my subway card? I had it. In my mouth. But I'm looking for my subway card. So it's all, it was only for about 30 seconds. But even though I had it, I thought I needed to get it. That moment, that 30 seconds, is how everybody lives. You think there's some wisdom you need to get, some enlightenment you need to get, some salvation you need to get, some hetal you need to get. Some anyutara samyak sambodhi that you need to find somehow through keto. But it's like the stupid person with the subway card already in his teeth. He doesn't need another subway card. 
She already has it. She just doesn't know it. Understand? Very simple. So it says, you don't get anything. You already have it. Wow. Amazing. Any questions about that? Very simple. Diamond Sutra is not simple like easy. It's simple meaning clear. It's like glass, the Diamond Sutra. It's interesting. When you look through glass, you never see the glass. You see what's outside the glass. That's what the Diamond Sutra is. The Diamond Sutra is like plate glass. Like glasses, actually. The Diamond Sutra, the glasses are not important. The glasses, these are not important themselves. The Tachega are not important. But when you put them on, if you use them, if you put them on like this, if you put them on like this, if you put them on like this, they don't work. But if you use it correctly, you can see this world as it is. So if you, you don't have to study this already too much. If you see that, boom. My true nature. Then put this on the side. Practice. That's the living diamond sutra. It's very clear. How wonderful teaching this is. How wonderful. How honest this teaching is. Okay. Next, chapter 23. The practice of good works purifies the mind. Furthermore, Sabuti, this, this is altogether everywhere, without differentiation or degree. Therefore, it is called consummation of incomparable enlightenment. Anyutara samyak sambodhi. It's everywhere. Anyutara samyak sambodhi is everywhere. It's everywhere. I like this very interesting to uh, last two and a half years. I, be, well, until he died, uh, I helped to take care of uh, our teacher, Sung San Kunsnim. And um, it was very interesting to be in his room a lot and to see people come into his room. And some people would say, oh, he has enlightenment. Sung San Kunsnim has enlightenment. I don't. He has it. I don't. It's very interesting. That's like, right now in my nose, I have space. I have space in here. I have big nose, so big space. But this space, the space in here, and this space are not different. The substance is not different. My body has space. That space and the space in your body, it's not different. The space quality, the space thing, it's the same. So, furthermore, Sabuti, this, this, yore, inin kudero, this, tatagata, this, is altogether everywhere, without differentiation or degree. Without differentiation, without quality or quantity. If you take the space in my nose, the space, this empty space, and the space out here, they're not different in quality or quantity. The space molecules, the space molecules, if you want to be intellectual about it. They're not different in quality or quantity. They're not. That's why they're called highest enlightenment. It is straightly attained by freedom. How do you attain it? Freedom from separate personal selfhood. Freedom from ego. Freedom from I. Freedom from I, my, me. Freedom from that idea. Freedom from that thought. Freedom from that thinking. That's enlightenment. That's all. It's so not difficult. 
It is straight, I like this, it is straightly attained by freedom from separate personal selfhood and by cultivating all kinds of goodness. Sabuti, though we speak of goodness, the Tathagata declares that there is no goodness, it's just a name. No goodness, quote unquote, it's just a name. There's no space. Space, where are you? There's no space. How could you call it? There's no space. Where's the space name? We call it space, but it's not space. That's just a name, space. Sound. We say sound, but that's not sound. It's just a name. Let go of the name. Then just see, just hear, just smell, just taste, just touch. Okay? So this Diamond Sutra is amazing. I hope all of you see what this is pointing at. It's pointing right here. My true nature. It's not inside, not outside. Okay? So if there's no questions about that, then uh, we can conclude in a few minutes this teaching of the Diamond Sutra. One more thing I want to say about this Diamond Sutra that's very interesting. The Diamond Sutra is not the words on the page. It's not the words on the page. And the Diamond Sutra is also not absolutely nothing. Some people, when they hear this teaching, remember a few chapters ago, the Buddha said, if you hear this teaching and aren't shocked or frightened, or intimidated, that means you have good karma. He says that a few chapters ago. Maybe someone can find it. He says about a, chap a couple chapters ago, whoever hears this kind of teaching and isn't frightened, oh my God, everything is already, I already have it. I, I, oh my. Whoever's not frightened or alarmed or shocked or disturbed, or confused too much by this, that means you have good karma. You realize something. From many lifetimes of practice, already your mind is prepared for this. And he says, you can't experience that. All of you, I don't see anyone jumping out of the situation here or running for the doors and screaming, pulling your hair out. Oh my God, this is too frightening to comprehend. Dude, I can't handle it. This is over the top, dude. No one's doing that. So that means from many lifetimes you have prepared your mind for this truth. That means you have approached this truth through many lifetimes of practice. The Buddha says that. Some people do hear this and go, nah, that's not real religion. Nah, that's all spacey, useless, intellectual stuff. But many of you have remained in the room until now. That means in some way you have prepared yourself for this teaching. So one more step is necessary. Let's look at chapter 24. Chapter 24 says something about, a little bit about what we should do about that. The incomparable merit of this teaching. The incomparable merit. So already you have stayed this long. That means you're not attached to the name or form of religion. Already you realize you don't need a special form of a Buddha or a God or a religion or a truth or a teaching or a dogma or a creed or a theology. You know that all the highest teaching is contained in this point. You know it. There. <coughs> Already you have some sense of that. That's incredible merit. Now, the Buddha says, the incomparable merit of this teaching, Sabuti, if there be anyone who gives away in gifts of alms, in donations, if anyone who gives away gifts of donations, a mass of the seven treasures, you know, diamond, ruby, pearl, boom, boom, there's seven of them, whoever gives away a ton of them, a mass of them, equal in extent to as many Mount Sumeru, that's like Mount Everest. Whoever gives away that much, 
seven Mount Everests, let's say, of diamonds and pearls and this and boom, 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 as there would be in 3,000 galaxies of worlds. If there's one kind of person who gives that much, that's more than Bill Gates times a billion. That's Bill Gates' amount of money times a billion. Someone gives away that much donation, that's great merit. That's extraordinary merit. That's one person. And there's another person. And there's another person who selects even only four lines from this teaching. Four lines from this teaching upon the perfection of transcendental wisdom. Receiving and retaining four lines from this and clearly expounding them to others. Not like me. I didn't expound this to you. I opened my mouth. My gums are flapping. For an hour and a half. That's low class. And clearly expounding them to others. The merit of the second person will be so far greater than that of the Bill Gates guy that no conceivable comparison, no conceivable comparison can be made between them. So, that means the merit of making donations is great. The merit of making donations is extraordinary. The merit of helping the poor. The merit of supporting a Greenpeace or a Amnesty International is fantastic. The merit of helping a sick person. The merit of helping someone who's confused is great, extraordinary. However, that merit, even how great it is, is not as great. It's not, it can't be compared to the merit of someone who gets it. Not the words like on the page, the person who sees what we've been talking about. The person who understands that, not just intellectually, the person who in their heart gets what this is pointing to. The person who gets that, even somewhat, he says, even just four lines. We already talked about maybe 30 lines. The person who gets four lines of what we just talked about gets the point, the experience it means, not the lines, not the words. This is not intellectual. In a very simple way, the person who gets this has greater merit than the person who gave away all that cold cash. But I hope you continue to give cash to our donation box at the end of this talk. Because remember, the merit of that is great. So, very interesting. The Buddha gives this teaching because until this point, people can hear, oh, everything is empty. Already we already understand. Already everything is perfectly pure and clear. Truth cannot be expressed in words. And forget to function. But the Buddha says, yeah, that's good, but... Functioning, the function of merit is also great. Don't forget that. Okay? So, everyone, thank you for your incredible pay attention mind. And uh, remember, moment to moment, past mind, you cannot hold on to. Present mind, you can't grab it. Future mind, you can't hold it.
Just put it all down, and it's already yours. Thank you very much. For